In the last video, we uh, introduced minimums and maximums and talked a little bit about the theory behind them and uh, gave some definitions and all that stuff. So uh, here are a few more definitions and then another example. So um, extremum is just a general term that basically refers to a minimum or a maximum. So if you say something like uh, the function does not have an extremum at this point, uh, that means that the function does not have a minimum or a maximum at the point that you're talking about. So that's uh, extremum, just a general term that means either one of these, min or max. Um, so minima or minimums is just the plural of minimum. So if you want to say, okay, the function has uh, no minima, that means there are no minimum values for the function. Um, maxima or maximums, similarly, just means a plural of maximum. Okay. So um, minima and maxima are probably more common, um, but you know either one of these is okay. So minima or minimums and maxima or maximums. And then uh, extrema is the plural of extremum. So I guess you could also say extremums, but I've never really seen that word anywhere that I can remember. Um, people will probably know what you're talking about, but it might be better just to say uh, extrema or extrema, probably extrema. Uh, so anyway, that's the new definitions here. So um, let's look at this example over here. Uh, zoom out a bit. So there is a point to this example, um, but let's just uh, look at this here. So here, negative 4, negative 1, negative 2, 2, 3, negative 3, 7, 5, uh, 9, 4, and 12, 7. So uh, you know, this is horribly not to scale, but that's okay, I guess. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. So where are the local mins and maxes? Well, here, that's uh, clearly local max, right? Because locally, in that little neighborhood around it, um, this is the largest value that we have for the function, right? Here's a local min, okay? Locally, in this little neighborhood around here, uh, this is the smallest value of the function. And actually, this is also the global min, right? This is the global min. Because um, there are no smaller values of the function anywhere. Okay, so this function is only defined from x equals negative 4 to x equals 12. Okay, so this is only defined on the interval negative uh, 4 to 12. Okay. So, um, all right, and then here's another local max at 7, 5, uh, another local min. And then here, so uh, this is not a local max because remember, uh, functions can't have local mins and local maxes at endpoints. Okay, so uh, remember the reason is that the formal definition of a local max or local min says you have to be able to put a small interval around uh, the x value. So if we try to put an interval around x equals 12, uh, and if we bring it up to the function, okay, it's fine over here, but this function is not defined to the right of x equals 12, so there's nowhere to go over here. Okay? So uh, this can't be a local max because you can't take a little neighborhood or a little small interval around x equals 12. So you can't satisfy the definition of a local max. But uh, this is a global max, right? Because this is the largest value, okay, 7, is the largest value of the function that uh, we ever get. Okay, so if you look at all the other y coordinates here, they're all smaller than 7. Okay, so we can have a global max at an endpoint, but not a local max. Okay, likewise, over here, this is not a local min, because if we try to put a small little interval around x equals negative 4, um, we can bring it up to the function here, right? But over here, uh, there's nowhere to go, because the function is not defined to the left of negative 4. Because okay, negative uh, 4 is the smallest value of x where this function is defined. So we cannot put a small open interval around x equals negative 4, which means we can't satisfy the definition of a local min at this point. So this can't be local min. Uh, it's also not a global min, right, because there's a smaller y value over here. Um, but So basically that just means this point is nothing. It's not a max or a min, uh, local or global in any case, so it's just nothing. Um, all right, so here we just summarize uh, this down here. So a local min at x equals 3 is y equals negative 3. That's this point right here. Another local min at x equals 9 is y equals 4. That's this point up here, okay, local min. Uh, local max at x equals negative 2 is y equals 2. Okay, that's this point right here, local max. <coughs> uh, local max at x equals 7 is y equals 5. Okay, local max right here. Um, and then the globals, so we have global min uh, and it is y equals negative 3 at x equals 3. Okay, so if we look uh, where x equals 3, so here the global min is negative 3 and it happens at 3. Okay, so this is the global min because uh, this is the smallest y value out of all the y values on the function. And likewise, uh, a global max is y equals 7 at x equals 12.
Okay, so up here, this is the global max. Uh, it is 7 at 12. So why do we say uh, is before at for global um, and for local we have at before is? Well, it doesn't really matter, but it just kind of emphasizes the point that for global min and global max, you can only have one y value. Okay, so local mins and local maxes, you know, you can have as many of those as you want and they can have all different values. Um, but for global min and global max, there's only one possible y value. So the global min is y equals negative 3 and it happens at x equals 3. The global max is y equals 7. Okay, that's the only possible global max we can have now. Uh, it is y equals 7. Uh, and it happens at x equals 12. So you want to be careful because, you know, you can only have one global min value and one global max value, but it might happen at more than one point. So we'll see an example of that later. Um, but anyway, the point I want to make with this function is, uh, look here. Here's a local max, and here's a local min. So notice the local max value is 2, right? So here the local max is 2, and up here at this point, uh, the local min is 4. Okay, so here a minimum value of 4 and a maximum value of 2. So a local minimum can be larger than a local maximum. Okay? So of course uh, a global min has to be smaller than everything, right? And a global max has to be larger than everything. Uh, smaller than or equal to and larger than or equal to, right? So the inequalities, they're not strict from the definition. So global min, the value is less than or equal to all the values. Global max, the value is larger than or equal to all the other values. Um, but for local min and max, it is possible that a local min could be bigger than a local max. Because remember, when you talk about local extrema, um, so extrema, plural of extremum, which is a min or a max. So if you talk about local extrema, uh, then you know, you're know you only talking about what's, happen what's happening uh, locally speaking in a little neighborhood around this point. So locally speaking, this is a max. Locally speaking, this is a min. Okay, but you know these are far enough away from each other that you know if you talk about locally over here, uh, whatever's happening over here doesn't matter. And likewise, if you talk about locally over here, then whatever's going on over here is totally irrelevant. Okay, so locally, um, kind of erasing it now, but locally this is a min, right? And locally that's a max, but uh, you know this min is larger than the max, and that's okay. So for local mins and local maxes, things like that could happen. That's okay. So uh, don't let that trick you up or anything, but it's, it is a possibility. So that's the point I want to make with this example here. Um, a few more examples in the next few videos, and then after that we'll start talking about critical points.